Hi everyone, I'm Rishabh, and I'm going to be talking about SafeBricks, which is joint to work with Chang, Raluca, and Sylvia. So traditionally, client enterprises have managed their own middle box devices, firewalls, load balancers, IDS boxes. But the advent of NFV has allowed them to avail the benefits of cloud computing and outsource NF processing from their networks to a third party service running in the cloud. Um, and in such a model, the NF implementations themselves can either be provided by the entity providing the cloud infrastructure, or they could come from the client enterprise itself, or they could be sourced from independent software vendors. Now, just looking at this picture, a significant concern leaps out at us, which is also the focus of this work, uh, security. Network traffic contains a lot of sensitive information, for example, emails. And in this context, the security problems that we want to tackle are threefold. First, we want to make sure that sensitive network content is not leaked to the cloud provider. And this is problematic because to implement network functions on the traffic, the cloud needs access to unencrypted clear text packets. At the same time, since these NFs are sourced from, could be sourced from independent vendors, we want to make sure that the implementations are not exfiltrating the traffic in any way. For example, by duplicating the traffic stream and sending them to their own servers. At the same time, we want to maintain and preserve the business interests of the, of the NF providers as well, who would want to protect the confidentiality of their NF code and rule sets from both the client enterprise as well as the cloud. Unfortunately, uh, solving these cryptographic solutions are insufficient to solve these three security problems. Cryptographic solutions are typically of two types. One, we could use a standard encryption scheme such as end-to-end -end TLS, but not only is standard encryption in incompatible with computation, which means you can't compute any uh, NF computations on the encrypted packet payloads, but they also leak information uh, because TLS does not encrypt the packet headers, and the unencrypted fields still leak information to the cloud provider. Another approach is to use specialized encryption schemes, as has been proposed by recent work, such as Blindbox and Embark. And what these systems do is they construct special encryption schemes tailored to specific classes of packet processing. The problem with these systems, however, is that they're too limited in functionality. While they can do simple tasks well, which means you can compare IP headers efficiently, or you can look for keywords in packet payloads, Anything more complicated than that cannot be handled. So for example, you can't handle regular expressions, which are quite uh, widespread today. So the question before us then is, how do we achieve full functionality along with our three security goals simultaneously? And our answer to that question is SafeBricks. SafeBricks uses a combination of hardware enclaves, for example, Intel SGX, along with language-based isolation to achieve the three security goals I outlined earlier. Before going into the design of SafeBricks, allow me to give you a quick primer on the two enabling technologies of our system. First, hardware enclaves, an example of which is Intel SGX. So enclaves are a technology by which the processor can instantiate a secure region of memory. Any code, any security critical code that resides within the enclave, along with secret data, is now protected from all software that outside the enclave by the processor, which means that even privileged software such as the OS cannot read the enclave contents or tamper with it. Enclaves also allow remote clients to attest its contents, which means that now a client somewhere else over the internet can run applications in an enclave in the cloud somewhere and remotely verify that the enclave's contents are correct. And in doing so, the remote client can also exchange a pair of keys, bootstrapping a secure channel with the enclave, which can be used to exchange further secret communication directly with the enclave in future. The second uh, building block of our system is Netbricks. Netbricks is a framework like Click that allows the development of arbitrary NFs. And it does so by exposing a small set of MapReduce-like programming abstractions to developers, which can be composed in a directed graph to build an NF. Each node in this graph representing the NF is uh, a Netbricks operator. The cool thing about Netbricks, though, is that it leverages the semantics of the Rust language to isolate NFs that have been deployed together, together in the chain without having to run them in separate, separate virtual machines, while still maintaining the safety and packet and memory isolation properties. This also allows Netbricks to be fast, uh, safe, and achieve zero-copy semantics. 
which brings us to SafeBricks. So now I will describe how SafeBricks leverages these two technologies to achieve uh, the three security goals that we want to achieve. The first one, protecting traffic from the cloud provider. The high level idea is simple. We want to run an NF inside an enclave in the cloud. Before the client enterprise sends its traffic over to this enclave, it verifies that the enclave contents are correct, which means it verifies that the actual NF has been loaded. And in doing so, it also exchanges a pair of keys with the uh, enclave, which will be later used to bootstrap a secure IPsec tunnel between the client enterprise and the enclave. And this logic can be centralized at the edge of the network at the gateway. At the gateway, we also implement an interception proxy, which is responsible for intercepting incoming TLS connections from clients within the network. Which means that now when a client wants to communicate with the destination over TLS, the gateway intercepts this connection, decrypts the TLS packets, encrypts them and sends them over to the enclave over an IPsec tunnel. The NF in the enclave processes the packets and returns them back to the gateway. And the gateway then delivers the packets after re-encrypting them with TLS to the destination. Note that in this process, both headers and payload are always encrypted at the cloud and are only decrypted uh, within the enclave. An alternate uh, architecture model is also possible where packets are directly delivered to the destination and Sabrix also supports uh, this architecture. More details on this are in our paper. The question that remains now is how do we uh, run an NF inside an enclave? And for that, it is possible to use one of a number of general purpose frameworks like Haven or Scone that run arbitrary binaries inside an enclave. But using such general purpose frameworks is undesirable. And that is so because we want to limit the amount of code that we put inside an enclave. In other words, we want to reduce the size of the trusted computing base as much as possible. And this is because any code that you put inside an enclave is necessarily trusted which means that you need to vet the code before you put inside. So you want this code that you need to vet to be as small as possible. At the same time, we also want to ensure that a minimal number of transitions take place between enclave and non-enclave code. And this aim is often at odds with the first, because the moment you, need, you want to reduce the size of the TCB, you need to partition the application. The moment you partition an application, you need to incur the cost of transitions between non-enclave and enclave code. So where do you draw the partition boundary? What is the sweet spot? The third challenge that we want to address is not all instructions are legal inside enclaves. For example, SGX does not allow system calls or instructions that lead to VM exits. So how do we overcome all these challenges in our framework? So the idea in SaveBricks is to re-architect the Netbricks framework while overcoming these challenges in a way that meets our security goals. So the first challenge, re-architecting Netbricks to reduce the amount of code that we put inside uh, the enclave. So this is what the Netbricks stack looks like, down from packet capture using DPDK upwards to NF processing. And this is our starting point, where we put all of the, the entire Netbricks stack into the enclave, which constitutes a maximal TCP. At the other extreme, we have only the security critical code, the programming abstractions that operate directly on unencrypted packets, and we can put that inside the enclave. And this would be the smallest TCP possible, but this would also incur a large number of enclave transitions, specifically one transition per node in the NF graph for each packet batch. So Savebrick instead compromises. We also pull in the Netbricks scheduler inside the enclave, and this allows us to eliminate most of the transitions uh, while processing packets. We get rid of all the transitions per node in the NF graph, only leaving us with a single transition per packet batch in the life cycle of a packet. And this is what the partition framework then looks like. Uh, we have the trusted code in green, the untrusted code outside the enclave in red. To make this work, we also need to introduce two new operators in SafeBricks that are responsible for taking packets inside the enclave and uh, moving them back outside once they're done. So the first operator receives packets from non-enclave memory, copies them inside the enclave, and decrypts them. And the second op operator re-encrypts re process packets and uh, returns them to memory outside. So, which brings us to our second goal, eliminating enclave transitions. This, at an abstract level, is the 
what the partition framework so far looks like, where we have the cost of one enclave transition per packet batch. Packets are read from the NIC by the host. Uh, the application transitions inside the enclave, processes them, and returns them outside. So we still have one transition per packet batch. Can we do better? Can we reduce, can we eliminate this transition altogether? And the answer is yes. Uh, the idea is simple. We decouple the trusted and untrusted parts from each other, run them in separate th threads. So now we have a host thread that is responsible for I.O. and an enclave thread that is running in parallel. Uh, and they communicate with each other using shared queues in non-enclave memory. So the host thread pumps encrypted packets into this queue, and the enclave thread uh, reads packets asynchronously from this queue and processes them and returns them out outside without ever exiting the enclave. So now we've reached a point where we have no enclave transitions at all. The third challenge that we wanted to address was uh, handling illegal enclave instructions, just system calls or instructions that lead to VM exits. And the observation that we make here is NFs in general do not need support for uh, system calls or instructions that lead to VM exits owing to the high performance requirements, except logging and time steps, which are crucial for many NF operations. So in SaveRix, we design custom solutions to handle logging and timestamps and do so without uh, the need for enclave transitions. Okay, so that was the first security goal, protecting traffic from the cloud provider. The next one, protecting traffic from the NF vendors. Uh, this is a problem because since NFs could be stored uh, sourced from independent vendors, they could be malicious, which means that they could be uh, they could attempt to exfiltrate packet to their own servers. So how do, you, how do we prevent against that? Because these NFs, are within, they need to be placed within enclaves, which means they need to be trusted. The observation we make here is NFs typically do not need access to all packet fields. For example, a firewall only needs read access to packet headers. A NAT needs both read and write access to headers, but does not need access to uh, packet payloads. So in safe bricks, we compromise. Instead of not trusting NFs, outright, we enforce least privilege across them, which means we only trust NFs with the amount of information they need to function properly. So what we want to do is we want to run all the NFs in the same address space within the same enclave. Packet should be ingested once and decrypted. They should then, they, they, they then cycle through all the NFs sequentially, and then they return outside after being encrypted. So to enforce least privilege in this uh, scenario, the first thing we do is we introduce a new operator in SafeBricks, which we refer to as whitelist. And uh, in constructing our NF graph, we intersperse this operator in the, as nodes between uh, subsequent NFs. And what this operator does is it embeds a vector of permissions in each packet before handing it off to the next NF. This vector of permissions governs the packet fields that uh, each NF is allowed to access. The question now is, how do we enforce these permissions? And the idea is to use Rust's ownership model. In SaveBricks, we introduce a controller, a new controller module that holds ownership of packets. So as packets enter the enclave, we give the ownership of the packets to the controller. Whenever network functions need to access a packet field, they submit a request to this controller. The controller verifies the permissions uh, vector, uh, checks whether the NF is allowed to access that packet field, and if so, it lends a reference to that packet field to uh, the requesting NF. And by uh, returning a mutable or an immutable reference, the controller can also disambiguate uh, read accesses from write accesses. So far, so good. This works for enforcing least privilege only if the NFs together are built using a compiler that, un that enforces these safety properties, which means that we need to assemble all these NFs together using a compiler that prohibits pointer arithmetic or unsafe typecasts or and checks array bounds. So how do we and how does a client ensure this? Well, one simple thing that it could do is it could source all the different NFs from the different vendors, assemble them locally using a compiler it trusts, and then uh, send it over to, a, to an enclave in the cloud. But by doing so, we violate the confidentiality of NF code and rule sets. The client enterprise now gets access to uh, the NF source code in the clear. So to prevent this, wait, this brings us to our third security goal, preventing the uh, leakage of NF code and rule sets to the client and the cloud. And to prevent this, the key idea 
is to use a special meta enclave in the cloud that is responsible for assembling the NFs together. So this enclave contains a compiler that both the NF vendors and the client enterprise have agreed upon. And that compiler is used to build uh, the NFs together. And this works because now both the vendors as well as the client can remotely attest the contents of this enclave. The vendors are assured that this compiler would not exfiltrate their code and rule sets, and the client is assured that it will actually implement the required safety policies. So this is what uh, NF assembly then looks like. We now have this special assembly enclave running in the cloud. Uh, both parties, the vendors and the client enterprise, remotely attest the contents of this enclave and verify that it indeed contains the compiler they have agreed upon. As part of this attestation process, the NF vendors exchange a key with this enclave. They use the key to encrypt their code and rule sets and sends the encrypted code to the client enterprise. The client enterprise attaches a configuration file to this uh, bundle of NF code and rule sets. And this configuration file essentially contains the placement of these NFs when stitched together in a chain, along with the least privileged policies that the compiler needs to enforce. This bundle is sent over to the enclave. Uh, it's built. It's decrypted first. It, the configuration file is used to build the NFs and stitch them together. And then finally, uh, the binary is deployed in a, in a new enclave. And now the enterprise can start sending over its packets and uh, NF processing can resume. And this is how uh, we achieve the three security goals that we started out to achieve earlier. So a quick preview on performance. Uh, we implemented SafeBricks and tested performance for four different uh, DPI applications, a firewall, a load balancer, a NAT, and a DPI. And in general, for, this is for a synthetic trace. We also have results for uh, real traces in the paper. In general, we found a decline of up to 15% for different packet sizes across applications uh, with respect to a baseline setup without uh, enclaves. This comes with a caveat, however. This overhead uh, is correct when NFs fit within enclave memory. So enclave memory is a scarce resource. And when the working set of the uh, NFs exceeds enclave memory, the overhead spikes as illustrated uh, in this figure, for which shows the performance of a DPI as a number of rules increases. NF, uh, enclave memory is limited to 94 MB and existing implementations of SGX. However, this is not a fundamental limitation. Future generations of SGX machines are likely to have more uh, enclave memory. So uh, we are hopeful. OK, so in conclusion, Sabrix uses a combination of hardware enclaves and language-based isolation to protect traffic from the cloud provider, enforce least privilege across uh, NFs deployed on a chain, all the while protecting the confidentiality of NF code and rule sets from the client enterprise and the cloud. In doing so, uh, Sabrix introduces a more modest overhead on the uh, performance of NFs. Uh, thank you very much, and I'm happy to take questions. All right, questions? Hyanuri <coughs> from Seoul National University. Um, I have one question about the uh, least privilege for the net network function. As you say, um, network function can have different permissions for each network function, but who can um, determine the uh, permission for each network function? I mean, who is responsible for determining the network function? Uh, yes, that's a great question. Um, we envision that these permissions will be decided offline by the client enterprise because the, ultimately the client enterprise is supposed to give a configuration file to the cloud, uh, to the compiler that assembles the NFs together. So the NF vendors need to communicate what permissions they need to the client enterprise. The client enterprise, if it agrees to those permissions, sends the configuration file listing these permissions to the enclave that builds them. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Matthew Hi. Milano, Cornell University. Great talk. Thank you. Um, I'm curious. You mentioned that there's an agreed-upon compiler that we have to use in order mm -hmm. to avoid unsafe blocks in Rust. Yes. My personal experience with Rust has indicated that unsafe blocks are kind of an important crutch, especially when you talk about using any library at all, which likely mm -hmm. use them. In practice, this effective prohibition on existing Rust libraries and on unsafe references 
how does that affect the kind of programs that people like to write, or is it doesn't not come up because the programs are simple enough? Um, in our experience, well, with the application that we experimented with, we did not need these unsafe libraries. You're absolutely correct that this could be a problem, but uh, I don't think that this, these wouldn't be able to. We wouldn't be able to easily circumvent them. There are ways to get around them without the need, without relying on direct pointer access. Uh, okay, thank you. Hi, Ajay Mahimkar from AT&T. Uh, probably a naive question. So you mentioned that within an enclave, you need to spin up uh, all your network functions or VMs for a network function. Uh, so now typical workloads for these VNFs are quite dynamic, and so you have to spin up, spin down functions mm -hmm. on the fly. So let's say a priori when you instantiate this, let's say if you have 10 VMs as kind of kind of provision for within an enclave, and say based on workload, if I have to scale up to 20 VMs, can you do it within the same enclave? Well, so the whole the, the idea behind NetBridge is not to use VMs at all. So all the NFs are running within the same address space, within mm -hmm. a single VM chained together. So there would still be a single NF, a single thread of NFs. Mm -hmm. The scaling question then comes across these NF threads, in which case you would uh, be able to spin up multiple enclave threads. So an enclave in this case corresponds to a virtual machine. I see. So you could use... Uh, you could add on elastic solutions to uh, say bricks for the kind of task that you want. Correct. Thank you. We have time for one more question. Uh, I was wondering, I mean, as Jake has been in the news recently as being vulnerable as well, so can you comment uh, on, on, on how safe bricks is, is vulnerable to the vulnerabilities that have been exposed there? Uh, yes, that's an excellent point. SGX is indeed vulnerable to side channels. Uh, there is a lot of ongoing research in overcoming these side channels, and solutions are being proposed every day. Uh, our contribution here is orthogonal to the kind of side channels that do exist in SafeBricks. It's very interesting future work uh, because solutions for these side channels have come with their own uh, performance trade-offs. So is a solution compatible with uh, network functions given their high performance requirements? That remains an open question. But yes, our solutions can be applied in a complementary fashion to uh, many of these side channel solutions as well. Thank you. So let's thank the speaker one last time.